everyone, on today's episode of Hero Hype, we're gonna be talking about Resident Evil. Four. Five. And six. Welcome to part two of our Resident Evil hype train. Last week we talked about zero through Code Veronica. Today we're gonna be talking about four, five, and six. Shinji Mikami, the creator of Resident Evil 1 and its remake, is back in the saddle, back in the directing chair with Resident Evil 4. Let's get started. Resident Evil 4, undoubtedly a masterpiece, but uh, I have mixed feelings about this game, probably because of this. We have to go. We don't have any time to waste. Go? Where? Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. And this. She will search for him until she finds him. Then they can go and put an end to Umbrella. And this. There's still something we've got to do. You mean? Yeah, it's payback time. We've got to destroy Umbrella. Now, let's finish this once and for all. And then we get this. Soon its stock prices crashed. And for all intents and purposes, Umbrella was finished. My entire childhood, my dream, okay? My mom would come into my room. She would say, Mike, what do you want out of life? I looked up at her and I'd say, to take down Umbrella, to take them down. They're a stain on the world. They're an evil corporation mutating genetics for evil purposes. And the Resident Evil 4 begins and that dream was over with a line of text. So Code Veronica is, is set three months after Resident Evil 2, short time. Now we go six years later and in that six years, some shady backdoor deals, some lawyers on Wall Street, the US government shuts down Umbrella. It's not some grand raid on some Umbrella headquarters with the Redfields or Leon or Barry or Rebecca or any other players in this franchise. It's just a, a, a text and some bureaucracy. I was robbed. I wanted to take down Umbrella. With that aside, let's dive into Resident Evil 4. Basically a reboot of this franchise, even though it continues the same continuity. We are back in the saddle as Leon S. Kennedy, first time since Resident Evil 2. And again, I, I, I love this game because it, it gets rid of the fear that, that the other games had. And in its place is tension. So during this six year time gap, Leon becomes some uh, super soldier, special agent extraordinaire, James Bond style. Can do anything you want in a time gap. That's why they do him. He's sent there to rescue the president's daughter. Now, divisive aspect of this game, I do like it because the tension now shifts from you to her. I mean, when enemies are coming at you from all sides, they're throwing up ladders, they got guys with chainsaws and burlap sacks, they're coming behind to attack you, they're coming in the front to attack her, what the hell do you do? You gotta get them, you gotta get them. It's all encompassing, just chaos. <laughs> Lastly, as batshit crazy as this story gets, as upset I am about not being able to take down Umbrella myself. It has some redeeming qualities. Who's there to redeem it? Who, you ask? One man, the man, Albert Wesker. Once again, working from the shadows. The constant in the Resident Evil timeline, sending Ada in to get the Los Plagas virus. Once again, just adding another piece to the puzzle, just adding it to his inventory, just getting all those viruses and getting ready for Ouroboros. Which brings us to Resident Evil 5. 
This game doesn't get a fair shake. It's got a bad rap. But I love it. Resident Evil 5, honestly, some of the best story moments in this entire franchise. One could say the culmination. First and foremost, I do want to give a shout out to Brad Ellis for making this co-op Resident Evil the glorious experience that it was. We beat the entire game in one day. Two sittings, had to have a lunch break, couldn't do it in one, needed the lunch. So again, the constant of Resident Evil, Albert Wesker. The story really shifted in a, in a dramatic way in Resident Evil 4. It was building off that in 5, but we had Wesker. His plan was finally coming to fruition! Now my whole life I had been playing Resident Evil solo, single player. My entire life. I mean, with the exception of Outbreak, we'll get into, we'll get into those spin-offs a little at the end here. Stay tuned. But, but for all intents and purposes, my entire life I had, been, I had been playing Resident Evil alone. It had been a very personal experience. And now, I got to share that with a friend. I got to share the love and the passion of Resident Evil with a good friend. And going through that game together was, was unlike anything I had done in Resident Evil. It was taking those really intense moments of Resident Evil 4 and just upping the stakes because there were two of us now. Just flooding in more enemies. Now I have such fond memories of Resident Evil 5 because it houses two of my favorite moments in this franchise. One of them is a cutscene. Let's just roll it! Don, roll the cutscene! What? And then the big moment, the payoff, the culmination. It's like they were just speaking to us. They knew. They said, man, we probably pissed a lot of people off. They didn't get to take down Umbrella. We just threw, a, threw some text up there. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a fight Albert Wesker in one of the best boss battles in the entire franchise. It's like you're fighting freaking Neo or Agent Smith himself. He's dodging bullets. You got a freaking hypnotized Jill Valentine running around. Your conscience is conflicted. Am I gonna attack her? It's freaking Jill Valentine. She's shooting at me. What the hell am I gonna do? Just, just beautiful game, just full of payoffs. Uh, uh, if, I, if I had a gripe, of Resident Evil 5. It is solely because of Resident Evil 6. Uh, Resident Evil 5 had a beautiful opportunity to wrap up this franchise. They had a shot and they missed it. That scene when you go down and you fight the liquors, you could have had fixed camera angles just in that section of the game, a tribute, a callback to the glory days of Resident Evil. You could have had Leon and Barry and all the supporting cast show up in that final fight versus Wesker. But they didn't shut the door and they left it open for the scum of Resident Evil 6 to crawl through. Where do we begin? Resident Evil 6. We begin first with too many cooks in the kitchen. This game is trying to do way too many things. Chris has amnesia. Ada has a clone. The villain turns into a dinosaur. Like what the hell, what the hell is this game, okay? You've just got three disjointed campaigns. You're trying to appease fans and you're, you're building off Resident Evil 5 in the worst possible way. You, you, you're looking at it, you're saying, 
you know, Resident Evil 5 added co-op, so we added more monsters flooding into the, the scenarios. Let's just add more stuff. Let's just add more. Let, what is this explosion? Like, what? there's so many problems with this game. The, 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 the quick time events are just in the, the center of the screen, making these loud noises. Pa-ching, pa-ching, pa-ching. I don't care. <laughs> Subtlety, please, Resident Evil. That's what you've always been good at. You've abandoned your subtlety. And let's not forget, Albert Wesker's gone. So who is your villain? Simmons, okay? I I swear on my life right now. This is this is this is me contained. This is not hype. This is not hyperbole. If I had to do a GT countdown top 10 worst villains or even top 10 worst characters of all time in video games simmons would be number one resident evil is built on villains umbrella wesker a, a tragically mutated birkin nemesis the ashfords even come on and you, you, you kill one of the most iconic villains in gaming history, and you replace it with Simmons. And then in a desperate effort, Capcom, to cling to the past, you have his illegitimate son, Jake Wesker? You want to talk about forced. This entire game is like one big filler arc. Simmons, like the, the NSA director... Working for Neo Umbrella now, another desperate effort to cling to the past, and he clones Ada because he's in love with her. What? <laughs> to wash the sour taste of Resident Evil 6 away, you know, this is a two-part Huber hype. We were just talking about mainline, zero through six. Wanted to give a couple shout-outs to the spin-offs. Also, a lot of comments were complaining that uh, I didn't give Resident Evil Zero a fair shake. I love Resident Evil Zero. I was just giving it a hard time. Uh, you know, corporate call. Gotta keep things moving. Blame it on him. Pin it on him. Uh, do love the spinoffs. Love Outbreak. I saw some love in the comments for Resident Evil Outbreak. Uh, my fondest memory of Outbreak, actually, is how bad the controls were. I remember the very beginning of the game trying to jump across a rooftop gap. All of us. Just to the death, to the death, to the death. To the death game over just great memories really fun game uh also resident evil revelations i'm lukewarm to resident evil revelations one stay tuned for resident evil revelations two and also the cg movies degeneration damnation very good uh, considered canon and a third one was just announced that is awesome it's coming out in like 2017 though we're gonna have to wait a little while on that one Despite the travesty that is Resident Evil 6, there is hope. We got Resident Evil 1 Remake HD just came out. Now we're getting zero next year. They just announced Resident Evil 2 Remake, the dream of dreams. And they've acknowledged that Resident Evil 7 is in the works. Comments from internally at Capcom have said that they have acknowledged the fans' desire for traditional survival horror and scares. Gone are the explosions, hopefully. Six put this timeline, this continuity, in a dicey situation. This thing has been running for decades. And to taint it, to destroy it at the finish line would be a sin. Resident Evil 7 needs to right this ship they need to get this back on track and end it the way Resident Evil deserves to be ended. So that's it for the show. Resident Evil 0 through 6. We did it. Hope you had a blast. In the meantime, let's have some comments from last week. Had to pull a bunch because it's Resident Evil. We could talk about it forever. First up is alcohol. 
I still have my N64 copy of RE2. God, I beat that game like a thousand times, but my favorite is and always will be Remake. Freaking love the tension of that game. So scary. And the addition of Lisa Trevor walking to that cabin. Oh my God. Check out Game Trailer's level. I did a level on Lisa Trevor. Level is on GameTrailers.com. It's a glorious show that unfortunately we don't have a lot of time to put into anymore, where we take our favorite levels in video games and uh, dissect them and just hype them up. Check it out, Resident Evil. Next up is Killer DLs. Resident Evil lore is dead to me. I don't care where they take it. RE6 ruined it for me. My favorite franchise is dead and I just want to move on and start my new life. I'll still go back and play one through five, but other than that, I can't. It just hurts too much. I have something in my throat. I'm not crying. You know, a wise man once told me by the name of Ben Moore that uh, it's okay if you create your own fantasy and choose to live in it. And you know what? In my fantasy, in my reality, Resident Evil 6 is filler and does not exist. Do the same, it's fine. Strike it from the record books. Ben Carter, how many calories does Huber burn when filming one of these hype videos? Approximately 372. Next up, Cusperminator. Never really played the old RE games. My first experience with them was when I borrowed four from a friend when I was 14 and it blew my mind. An intense story, amazing boss fights, and super creepy atmosphere. Should I give Resident Evil 1 Remake a try? You absolutely should. Halloween is right around the corner. Download it on PS4, have it ready to go, installed, and boot that sucker up when the sun sets behind those buildings. Also, quick shout out to Resident Evil 4 for putting Resident Evil further on the map and uh, uh, enticing players that had never played the previous games into that franchise. That's something Resident Evil 4, uh, I, don't, I don't give it enough credit for doing that. Hoyo Marcus Silva Bastos, I just love pre-rendered backgrounds, absolutely. Uh, Vincent X, Doom is for boys. Hexen is for demons. Goddamn right. Next up, McGun. McGun, we're gonna have to talk. The Resident Evil story sounds really intriguing. Too bad I skip all the cutscenes. Mwahaha. We're gonna need to talk, man. Seriously. Lastly, Pervs, Pervy's uh, Hubert, no T, common. Uh, no offense taken, a lot of people put a T on there, just Hubert. Do you think since the loss of Shinji Mikami, they will never release a Resident Evil game as good as Resident Evil 4? Do, th do you think the franchise has lost a lot of its appeal since his lost? Three words for you. The Evil Within. Coming up on GameTrailers.com this week and our YouTube channel, it is a busy week. We are in full swing of review season. We've got a Yoshi's Woolly World review. We've got a Fatal Frame 5 review. Survival Horror Old School is back. We've got a Zelda Triforce Heroes review and possibly a Tales of Zestaria review. Also, Ben Moore uh, sits down to dissect and discuss the entire Halo story in about 15 minutes. Get caught up before Guardians going through all of them. Quickly before we leave, I uh, just wanted to give a update on my replaying of Resident Evil 6. Over the past year or so, I have been streaming on Twitch all of the mainline Resident Evil games. We just finished Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 5 is next, then 6. Uh, if you don't know about our streams, uh, they are every day Game Trailers Twitch, 6 p.m. Uh, members of the staff play current, old, just any game at any time. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Be sure to check it out. I am at Michael B. Huber. Uh, let's just continue the Resident Evil talk. I love it. Again, I'm sure all of you can just talk about it forever. But uh, this time, let me know what you think about where Resident Evil 7 should go. Also, if you're concerned about a Resident Evil 2 remake without uh, Kamiya and Mikami involved, just uh, let's bounce this back and forth, see where this franchise is going together, and see you next week. 
time for Hubris Q. We only had time for the mainline Resident Evils, but I wanted to give a proper shout out to Revelations 2, the triumphant return of Barry Burton, a fan favorite, trying to save his daughter from the clutches of some evil shit. Raid mode has no business being as addicting as it is. Go through classic Resident Evil locations, using classic weaponry, fighting classic monsters, Revelations 2, better than 6, Redemption. I am here with the best in the world, the GT champion, the close talker, CT. What do you say to the people who think this company has gone soft? It has gone soft. I'm here to bring the attitude back where it belongs. It's the golden age. There are those who say we are no longer in the golden age. The attitude is gone and we are soft. What do you say to them? Are you saying I've gone soft? You misunderstood me. That's not what I'm saying. Let me say this at a distance you'll hear me from. This is the Attitude Era, and I am the champ! Hola, amigos. Hi. I am Huevos Ranchero. I've been hearing about a man named Close Talker saying that he is bringing back the Attitude Era. But this is false, my friends. He is an imposter and a big dumb baby. I am the true Attitude Era. And I will prove it in the ring or outside the ring, anywhere he desires, amigos. So let it be known, close talker, I will come for you and I will be the champion. Do we, do we know what's going on? Do we know what? Do we know what's going on? Listen, huevos rancheros. If you want me, you come and find me. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll return to scheduled programming now.